So dealing with imposter syndrome, this is happening to everybody all the time. People who even have good jobs and who are really top of the game, trust me, everybody goes through imposter syndrome. Um, I've gone through it many times. I do it till this day, even though I have had several years of experience with work, with what I do, and uh, working as a consultant. Um, when you do work as a consultant, you're supposed to know what you're talking about. And uh, even in certain days, I feel like I don't know what I'm talking about or feel like if the people who are listening to me, do they really think I'm bullshitting or this is something that I am a professional in? And, you know, this started with the day one of my job here in Canada and it happens till this day. So how do I deal with it? So let's go back to 2012 when I first started working here in Canada and actually had made a career shift. So prior to 2012, I used to have different jobs in sales and online sales in uh, telemarketing and uh, being a loan officer for a mortgage company. So end of the day, it was all related to sales. And that was something that I was com comfortable in. I was young and, uh, you know, just basically started working in sales and just make my way around it. And whatever I, good offer I used to get for better money and better commission, I would just take it. But I knew back in my mind that I, this is something that I don't want to do for long term. This is I, I wanted to be in tech. I loved sales, but I love technology as well. And I always used to think about how do I combine these two things. And living in Pakistan and living in other countries other than North America, there wasn't really a concept of being in tech and also selling the tech. So I just used to figure out ways of how I could get into it. And one way was understanding technology and getting into technical support or technical implementation, like an entry level job that can get you your foot in the door and then you can figure your way out on learning new things and understand how you can further excel. So when I first moved here, I uh, got a job at Best Buy at Geek Squad. If you guys don't know what Geek Squad is, it's just a tech repair shop within Best Buy. Best Buy is an electronic store, big box store. And um, I just got a, you know, just went door to door. How I got that job, that's another day story. But I just found that job and I just got into it. It was a minimum wage job and I started basically repairing computers or changing hard drives and troubleshooting if there was a virus and clearing virus for people or if the computer was heating up, kind of clean it up, upgrade the cooling system and stuff like that. And back in the day, these were the things that people come in to repair for. You know, the technology has really advanced now. People don't really come in to upgrade their cooling system stuff unless it's like a gaming machine. But that's what people used to come up with. And as I was solving the problems, I was always into tech. I was, you know, always tinkering with computers when I was growing up and electronics and stuff. So I had this natural knack into electronics. So, um, and prior co to coming to Canada, I had done some IT certifications that had given me a certificate around handling um, hardware and troubleshooting software and understanding networking and servers and stuff like that. So I had Microsoft based, backed based uh, certification that told that basically showed that I am qualified to do these kind of things. So as I was, you know, doing that stuff, I was looking around to see what else was out there. So I've, as I'm building my exposure, and as I'm building my experience around technology and having a job within Canada, and I'm building that experience. Let's see what else I can get there. So I was just looking around and going around and uh, applying for different jobs and looking for recruiters who would help me get a job. And I came across this one recruiter that took my profile and, you know, a few months went by and then they contacted me. And they said, you know, we have a job for you in this really big organization, um, but it's only a two month contract. 
but it will be really good for you to get that exposure, put that on your resume. It will open more doors for you. So why don't you just, you know, give it a shot. So here I have this full-time job, uh, even though it's paying minimum wage, I think it was a dollar or two above minimum wage at that time. I think the minimum wage was $11 an hour and I was getting paid 13 because I was performing really well because I had that sales background that really helped me to, you know, combine the technology, selling that technology. So, you know, when people came in for repairs and stuff like that, it was really easy for me to communicate to the customer. So I was doing really well um, in that job. So I have this full-time job, um, got full-time hours, but doesn't really pay that much. It doesn't pay all the bills. It was, you know, I was with my wife at that time. So, you know, we were sharing the bills and, you know, she was making way more money than I was. So we were able to figure it out, but it wasn't something, uh, you know, it wasn't a living wage. And on the other hand, I had this job offer where it was was a lar large organization. I didn't really know how big this company was at that time, um, but it was only a two month contract. And after that, it probably won't renew. There was no promises of renewal or anything like that, but it would be really good exposure. So I ended up interviewing and going back and forth and, uh, you know, I got the job and it was a two month contract. And, you know, I started the job and um, I can tell you this much that 50% of the stuff that I had to do there, I knew how to do. And because I had this background in technical, um, having, having the technical knack around technology and understanding everything. But 50% of it was new because this was as enterprise level as they, their way of doing things, big organization. So I used to feel like, you know, hey, what if they think I don't know what I'm doing or you know, if they ask me to do something and I can't figure out what am I going to do. So that used to build this imposter syndrome where I was like, hey, I got this job now, but what am I, what if I'm not good enough? Um, so what I started doing is when they would ask me to say, hey, can you look into the specific issue or troubleshoot this issue? What I would do, I would take that away and I would do my research. You know, I would look up on the internet this, the keywords that, you know, they would tell me. And I would look into it, see what that means, try to understand it. And, you know, internet is your best friend. You can really ask the question and say, hey, tell me this um, answer. Uh, or give me the response for this um, in a very layman language, in a very simple language so I can understand. And you can keep doing that and, you know, you will start to get comfortable the more you read about it and how to solve it. And you can test, you know, troubleshoot and tinker with it in a test environment and then apply your solution. And 50% of the time it will work. 50% of the time you will go have to ask your superior or your colleague or your manager to say, hey, this is something I'm doing it for the first time. I haven't really looked into it. This is the kind of solution that I think should solve the problem, but I wanna run it by you to understand if this is the right approach or if this is something you've dealt with in the past, um, then should I um, apply your way of doing it? And that way, what starts to happen is, is not only you get to fix the problem, now you know if this occurs next time, what you have to do. And now you have gained that experience and that knowledge and you start putting that into your portfolio, into your knowledge base. And then this just keeps going on and on and on and on and on. And then slowly you start to build the confidence around understanding the technology, understanding how you can solve the problem. But at the same time, it also gives you the confidence to know when you that you don't have all the answers all the time. And it's okay to reach out to someone who might know the answer, who might be more experienced than you are and solve the problem together. So next time you can teach how to solve that problem to somebody else. And this is just a cycle. It's a cycle that keeps on going. Someone's more experienced than you, you learn from them, and then you become that mentor for somebody else or a newcomer who doesn't understand it. So you learn, you apply it, and then you give that knowledge to somebody else and it just keeps on going. And that's what will start to build the confidence. That's what started to help me deal with imposter syndrome on a regular basis. And when you're younger, when you're new in the industry, or this is something you're doing for the first time, 
you're always going to have that imposter syndrome. And it's probably going probably to be way heavier than it is later down the road because now you have figured out the way on how to solve the imposter syndrome for yourself and how to deal with it and how to overcome it. So that's something that I applied when I was younger and I was getting into the industry for the first time to overcome it. So I know you guys out there probably deal with it on a regular basis. I have people reach out to me to say, hey, I'm trying to switch jobs or I'm trying to get into a new industry. I've been doing something for a long time. I'm really comfortable, but I've reached a ceiling and I don't know if I really want to keep going at it. And, uh, you know, I see these other areas of growth, but I don't know if I can do it. Then this is the advice and this is the guidance that I take them through every single time. It's like start with first floor. Don't think about all the things after. Don't think about, oh, what if this happens? What if that happens? Don't start clogging yourself into all these scenarios that haven't really even happened yet. And they might not happen. They might, but they might not. So stop worrying about things that haven't really happened yet and focus on what's in front of you right now. How can we get you over that speed bump of imposter syndrome at first level where you can get into the job, where you can get into the new industry and then slowly start figuring out other ways of solving other problems. And trust me, it sounds daunting the first time. It sounds scary and it sounds like everyone's and looks sounds like and feels like everyone's like looking at you at all times and every action you take, everything you do, everything you try people are just judging you uh, and it's hard you know even making these videos like this I used to make you know videos a long time ago and in the beginning I was I had this imposter syndrome but the more videos I made the better that kind of feeling went away and then I stopped and then after a few years now that I'm starting to make these videos again I feel that pressure again but then the more you do it the, the, comfortable, the more comfortable you get, the less you care about what other people have to say. And you'll start to find people who actually appreciate what you're doing and who want to support you to continue what you're doing. So this is something that um, has helped me and helps me on the daily basis on dealing with imposter syndrome and thinking about what other people would say and how other people would think and really focus on what's right ahead of me that I need to overcome. Is that a new career change? Is that, you know, getting a new apartment to rent and how you're going to afford all that stuff? And like, are people going to think that, you know, you're just stretching yourself too much? And like, how, you know, what are you going to do in order for you to really survive in this surrounding? Like thinking all those things, I think you just need to stop thinking about all of that stuff. Then just focus on the task at hand and saying yes to that task. If someone's offering you a job or if someone's offering you to say, even in your current job and say, hey, you know, you're, you're, let's say you're in a marketing department and they're asking you to do something which is not in your department, like it's something in operations or maybe they're asking you to troubleshoot something. That's your opportunity to say yes. And then saying yes will force you to figure things out. Maybe you'll do a half-assed job. You won't be able to do everything the right way. But showing up and saying yes is 50% of the work done. The 50% is you can Google it on the internet on how to figure it out. You can ask your peers. You can ask people around you and combine all of that to solve that problem. And now you will know what to do to solve that problem and what not to do to solve that problem. And it will also tell you if this is something you like doing. Do you like doing more of operational work than your regular marketing job? Or do you like doing more of tech stuff? And it will give you more flavor of understanding what you like on the day-to-day -day basis. And if you're interested, you can dive, dive more deeper into that subject, into that, into that, and ask your colleagues or that person who asked you to do that and say, hey, you know what? I really enjoyed doing what you asked me to do. I learned a lot. I probably didn't do it perfectly, but this is something that I would like to do more of. So if you have more opportunities around that, I would love to support that. And, you know, that person will also be eager to give you that to say, you know what, maybe this person doesn't know everything today, but they are eager to learn and they're they want to work hard to learn more. And trust me, 
you will start to get more opportunities and that imposter syndrome will start to go away. Hopefully this information helped you out. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next one. Peace.